Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I are speaking with Manny Pacheco about all things Hollywood. Manny, great to see you again. Well, thank you for having me here. What's, uh, top, what's the topic for today? I have, I have the topic, and it is a box office flops. This summer, hmm. um, I guess we're still kind of in a post-COVID uh, movie uh, era. Uh, maybe not technically, but um, I, the box office has been, for movies, has been pretty rotten since COVID, uh, even well. since it came back. Yeah, tepid, and sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wondered I wondered from your perspective, uh, do flops are, are flops relative? A, a box office flop, a movie flop, is that relative? Is it relative to the times or is it uh, uh, is it a they're kind of a universal standard, a movie is a flop? Well, it's like a, like anything else, it's like going to Vegas. You're you're you you know, producers and uh, film companies are, are really throwing the dice to see and try to predict what the temperature of an audience is. Sure. And then they got to make some very, very uh, important decisions. And I think at the top of the list, the budget, how much is a film going to cost? Because yes. if you cannot reach the, the final figure with audience receipts, then technically the film is a flop. So yes. for example, a, a movie who's got a very modest budget and makes a modest amount of money, but breaks even or better, well, then it's not a flop. Yeah, but if you have point. this big, big budget and spend gobs of money that you just never hope to recoup, then you're guaranteed a flop. Hmm. And that's yeah. that's the situation. Well, so and that's, that's a good but point. It seems, it seems to me, though, that uh, uh, with... Uh, and I, I don't want to get into a larger discussion about it, maybe another time, of AI and things like that. But it seems that the ones that are almost universally not flops are the animated offerings. Mario Brothers, they had well, a, a couple of blockbuster yeah. animated, and some were uh, really appreciated by adult audiences as well. So uh, that, has the animation changed what you consider a flop, or is it still the, you got to make your money back and then you got to make your well, money back this, for promotion? This summer, Elemental was a flop. And if you go back mm -hmm. to 1940, Fantasia was a flop. Oh, <laughs> so, right. Yeah, you didn't know that. I mean, no, right no, now, no. Fantasia is considered this iconic piece of, of, of animation, sure. but it was a flop. It was, without a doubt, a real flop. Yeah. And um, yeah, what you don't expect to be flops are those big popcorn movies in the summer, you know, the Spider-Verse and all of those right. kinds of films, the Marvels. But, you know, there have been flops, and this summer has taken it pretty hard. Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is a Marvel film, you expect yeah, it to be sure. good as far as box office receipts go, and it wasn't. And then follow it up with the, you know, with, with a, a series, a serial of films, you know, and, and Indiana Jones is about as big as it gets. Yeah, and uh, and it doesn't do well. Doesn't hope to recoup that's you know three hundred million dollar budget. It doesn't help that Steven Spielberg did not direct the film. Yeah, and um, you know they're they're saying that today's kids don't have a memory about Indiana Jones. Well, they didn't have a memory about Top Gun, and that was a massive right. hit. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So that that's a, that's a weak argument as far as I'm concerned. I think they spent way too much money expected the audience to just show up. But like you said, John, in this uh, COVID era, older folks just simply are still not going to the movies. And if yeah. you expect an older audience to help, you know, add to the coffers, well, you better think again. And that's what really is hurting the Oscar movies, the so-called smaller movies as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we keep our fingers crossed at the final totals with Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, but, you know, maybe they would have been better off to save their money, put the two movies together and call it Barbieheimer. <laughs> I don't <laughs> They would have saved a little bit more money that way and you get both movies, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, talking about flops brings me back into history to Michael Cimino or Michael, whatever his name is, Cimino, the director's, I think it was Heaven's Gate. Is oh, that the yeah. right name? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, you know, I, mean, I watched that. Yeah. 
it people badmouthed it even when it came out. Oh, it's too long. It's uh, too indulgent, and it's uh, something or other. Jamino ought to be riding off and uh, off the rails and a uh, you know tarred and feathered out of Hollywood. But I went to it anyway. I'm that kind of guy. If I think it's going to be interesting, I'll go see it. I don't care what they say. Sure, sure. And I went to it, and it was too long. It was, but it was beautifully done. Right. And I kind of liked it. You know, it was a, it was too long in the sense that, they could have been an, an hour shorter. There's no question about that. But I right. liked, I liked the artistry of it. I liked the story. I thought it was great. Um, but I could see why everybody else would mm -hmm. call it a flop. Artistically, I thought it was wonderful. Well, commercially. It was a flop because it didn't make the money back. Right. That's really the bottom line here. Yep. And you know, I spoke about Steven Spielberg, but his last two his last two films technically were flops. West Side Story, The Fablemans did yes. not recoup their monies. Uh, yeah. Well done movies, fabulous, beautiful. When we look back 20, 30 years, we're gonna say what wonderful films they were, yes. but technically they were flops. If I give you some names of movies that you think are iconic, they were flops yeah. because they did not recoup their monies. Hugo. Martin Scorsese's mm -hmm. film. That was a great film. Movie that talks about the, Love talks that about film. the restoration of film. It was a flop. Love that film. That was a and, wonderful film. And here's one. I mean, I'm really going to be bad here. I'm going to really get attacked for this. Okay. The Shawshank Redemption was a flop. No. 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 It did not ever recoup wait, its wait, money. Wait, wait, the thumbs, the thumbs down on Manny is starting here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm it was a vile. Being reviled. <laughs> oh, Shawshank wow. was absolutely a flop when you consider that the movies surrounding it that year were hits uh, Pulp Fiction and Ed Wood and, of course, uh, Tom Hanks as uh, Forrest Gump. Even Quiz Show did better. Shawshank Redemption was an absolute and complete flop. Wow, Today, wow. it's beautiful and people remember it as a masterpiece. Yeah, Willy yeah. Wonka with Gene Wilder. A flop. Really? No kidding. Absolutely. Nobody wanted the Candyman. Wow. <laughs> and of course, it goes back to even It's a Wonderful Life. Might have been a hit, except for Best Years of Our Lives was just a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And people, after the war, didn't want to see a dark, uh, kind of Christmassy kind of film. And It's a Wonderful Life was, in fact, a flop. A mild flop, mm -hmm. but uh, it, I don't think it ever really recouped its its money. Yeah, Harold, it. How about Harold and Maude? Absolute flop. Today, it's one of the iconic comedies in the Library of Congress Film Registry is one of the great, great films. It yeah. was a not only just a flop, it was a massive flop. It yeah. never recouped its money until recently because of all the midnight showings at, at, at movie theaters, because it became no one of those kind of films. So really, no really, uh, so it's not to, to, to uh, uh, mislead our audience too much. You are not necessarily talking about the quality of the films. You're talking about no. a flop is just whether or not it made money right. uh, in its peer groups, because Fantasia, well, as you say, yeah. uh, uh, didn't make its money back, but certainly over the years, it's proven its durability as a as a, a, a artistic masterpiece. Yeah, and, and over the years, if you start adding DVD sales, streaming sales, I'm sure it's made back its money by now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm talking about its initial release. Sure. And you're right, Art. We're not talking about the artistic merit of a film. We are talking yeah. simply of the fact that the, 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 the budget is never uh, met right. at, at the, at, after its first release. And well, that's, it is, that's a It problem. is called show business. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's right. Know, that's that's the whole point of the box counting the money, you know. Right, you're right about that. But yeah, it's just it, yeah. I know when I said Shawshank Redemption, the two of you were like, yeah, I know. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna remove my thumb from the scale of death uh, on that one for you, Manny. <laughs> and in fact, I'm gonna go when we're finished. I'm gonna go find it on. Netflix or wherever it is and watch it again. I love that movie. Well, let me, let me just leave you with this. If you if you want Renfield to be a hit, you know, the recent re release of the Nicolas Cage movie, go yeah. see it. Otherwise, it's a flop. Or no. Yeah. No, <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to convince me. My nickel is not going to help Nicolas Cage in that movie. Sorry.
Sorry, Nick. Well, there you go. And, you know, from your mouth to God's ears, I wish it was just a nickel. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Manny, once again for an illuminating tour of things that are that frequently spoken of, but it's part of the, the lore and the backgrounds of Hollywood and why some movies make it, some don't. And uh, uh, thank you very much. Well, yeah, it's time I'm, to get out before we become a flop. Yes. Yes. And well, I'm just going to say now that we're done, I'm going to go flop on my bed and just take oh, a nap. <laughs> <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.